Personally, I feel like I'm a very uh, fragile person, so I do not rely on my own self, but I know that God equips us for all works of service, even whether it is standing in front preaching. This is not my um, number one go-to, but I do thank you for being here this morning. <clears throat> okay. Your Bible, does everybody have their Bible with them? I know we all carry our phones because it's so convenient to have our telephone. And I got into the habit of using my phone for absolutely everything. My whole life is on my telephone. And one day a friend of mine said, oh, Deborah, have you got your phony Bible here with you again? And that convicted me to my very core. I went, oh, but it's so convenient. And everything is on it. I can do my notes. I can highlight. I can do everything. And it's with me all the time. But when we allow our phones to be the only way we read the Word of God, honestly, I truly believe that we limit what He wants to do through his word, through us. Amen? Come on. I'm a little bit insecure right now, so I'm like, please give me all the help I can get. <laughs> and it's like, you know when you have a GPS in your motor car, it just gives you where you are going right at that particular point. I love the old maps. When, I remember when we first used to drive down to California and we'd open up these maps and try and follow the red line and the blue line and when they became like spaghetti, had no idea where we were going. But we still got to our destination once we kept the track. But with the GPS, and then you can also see little shortcuts. With the GPS, you only see what's on the screen. You don't get the big picture. And it's the same with our telephone. When I just read the verse, when I just look it up, I go, oh yeah, I've read that, but I don't see the big picture. And I think we get into the habit of just reading that what is in front of us instead of like, oh, what's happening here? Like, you know, the Bible is such an exciting book. When we start to delve into it and to read it, it is full of beautiful treasures, wonderful promises that God has for you and I. And if you turn to your Bible or click into um, your app and turn to 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. And I just felt yesterday to share this. This was so exciting in my heart was that God has given you and I everything, everything that we need for a godly life. Amen? Very good. Everything that you and I need, He has given us. He has called us out of darkness, we would read in First Peter. And He has called us into His glorious and wonderful light. He doesn't just call us and leave us, but He gives us wonderful, wonderful gifts. He's given us wonderful promises and treasures. So in 2 Peter 1, 3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of Him, through our knowledge, you can um, color in or underline, through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. And I just, in my heart, I just know the more I get to know my beautiful Savior, the more I get to know who He is, I understand His grace more and more. It's almost like this, this petal, this flower that just opens up and exudes more and more fragrance. The more time we spend in His presence, the more we get to know Him. Amen? And it doesn't matter how many times you read the same Scripture over and over Every time, the Holy Spirit will come and He will just reveal another little part of His character. He will reveal a whole lot more of what's going on in my heart. But that only comes by spending time with Him. It's through the knowledge of who He is. What I'm saying to you today, sweet friends, is nothing new. And Peter says, like, even when we read the chapter, he says, like, I'm telling you things that you already know. But I'm doing this as a reminder. It's a reminder to me as well. Like, since we've been back, it has been crazy frenetically busy in my life. And when I uh, was with, in South Africa, I spent lots of time praying, lots of time. And God just downloaded constantly. And I said, Lord, this is such a sweet spot. But for that time, I needed 
that extra oomph, right? Since I've been home, I've been basically living on a, on a lick and a prayer. Like, oh, Jesus, please speak to me while I'm rushing off here. Oh, Holy Spirit, I know you never leave me nor forsake me. You see, we got all our pet scriptures that we have, that we use. And then I started to feel, I started to get a little bit... Does anybody know or feel familiar with that feeling? Pardon? I needed some oil. I started to get a little scratchy. It doesn't take me long when I haven't been in his presence. You see, because my soul longs and pants after the things of God. And when we are used to being in that sweet place of being in his presence, when we come out of the presence, our soul, our spirit starts to cry out. I started, and the way that we can realize this, I'm, I know I'm jumping right ahead of myself here. The way we start to notice, well, Michael will be able to tell you when Deborah hasn't spent time with Jesus. <laughs> I get, ah, you know, it doesn't take me long. And I have a little quick little snappy answer or I'm irritated. Very way faster. My endurance to be able to withstand stuff is way shorter. So when Peter says our knowledge of him and how do we get to know him is by spending time with him. That's why times like this are important because when we come together as a family, we actually rub off on each other and we learn from each other and we are encouraged by one another. And we, we, we hear a message and we hopefully, well, my prayer is that you leave here encouraged and challenged at the same time. In verse 2, the better we know God, the more we realize the extent of his grace and his peace to us. You know, I'm always fascinated when I speak to somebody who does not know Jesus as their personal Lord. First thing they'll say, oh, he's a God of wrath. He's such an angry God. He will just smite, smote. And they always quote in King James, like he just smotes his people. What's smoting anyway? (laughs) But the more we spend time with God, when I read through the the Old Testament, God is a God of grace. And how he constantly, constantly was pouring himself out to his people and constantly trying to draw them into his presence. And it's when they wandered off. He then had to come and give them a little bit of a wake-up call. But that was after warning them. He, he exuded so much grace. How much more in the New Testament where we have Jesus who shows us a new and a living way. There is such freedom in his presence. But freedom comes by spending time with him. You see, because when I'm with Jesus, like we all know that by ourselves, our Even our righteousness, our own righteousness is as filthy rags. But he has clothed us. He has clothed you and I in his glory. And because of that, I can come freely into his presence. I don't have to bow and scrape and whip myself and go through like a gazillion repental paths. No. God, Father, forgive me. Thank you. I can freely just come into his presence. And you know what? He doesn't say, sorry, office is closed right now. I'm too busy for you. I'm dealing with Michael. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of time. <laughs> His, uh, he says, freely come into my presence. Anytime. Anytime. The blood has made a way for us. There is no sin that has not been covered already by the blood. All we need to do is come in ask for forgiveness, and we are cleansed, and we come into his presence. So please don't let anything, condemnation comes from the pit of hell. Stamp on that thing right now, come on. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, of course you are. You are more than good enough because of Jesus. Say that. I am good enough. I'm good enough. I am beautiful. Come on, ladies, you battle with that. We always find something wrong with ourselves. Like even this morning, I was trying to, knew I was going to be standing in front of you all. I was trying to put on makeup. I'm hopeless at putting on makeup. I'm like, oh my gosh, have I got enough? Can I cover up these old age spots, right? (laughs) 
It's all going to wash off later. But anyway, God, we don't have to do that. I don't have to put on makeup to come into God's presence. In fact, naked I come before you, Jesus, because you see me. This thing, this body is going to pass away. We spend so much time feeding and looking after this thing. Now, please hear me nicely. Don't not look after your bodies. Please do wear deodorant. <laughs> please do wash your hair, okay? And mend your clothes, iron your shirts. But the same amount of time that we spend feeding this fleshly at exterior, may we be so cognizant that we have a spirit man who is crying out for the same kind of care, okay? When I'm hungry, my body knows it's hungry, okay? And my best is just go to Costco, buy a big bag of chips, and I think, oh, you know what? I can live on this for the next three days. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we all know if I just live on chips, that's not going to do me any good. It's going to do me no good. And it's the same thing. Like we can't just be snacking on a little verse here and a little verse there. We need to be spending time feeding our spirit man, okay? So verse 3 says, The more we know God, the more we experience, the more we experience his divine power. Who says like, oh, have you heard this incredible speaker? Have you seen how they work in signs and wonders and miracles? Oh my goodness, blind eyes opened. Who doesn't want to see that? Who doesn't want to see people set free in every area of their lives? Oh, dude, that guy has got such a prophetic gift. Wow. But we always think it's that other person. But God has given you everything you need. God has given you words that you can speak that will bring freedom into somebody else's life. Amen? Yeah. Repeat after me. God has chosen, God has chosen. Me, me to mirror him. God has chosen me to mirror him. And I look at myself and I go, oh, Lord. But you know what? You have got to break that horrible thinking that you are not good enough. And I'm speaking to myself right now as well. Okay, because that, I believe, is what keeps all of us from actually going forth in might and power. Amen? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, the Bible tells me. And we sing this with the kids. Greater is he that is in me. But boy, oh boy, am I so good at keeping him down, down, down. Because why? I feel like, oh, I'm not the right person to be able to be that one that can speak mighty oracles of God. We are vessels. Just like that little teapot. Huh? Tip me over, Lord. Tip me over and pour me out. Allow yourself to be tipped over in his name. And we all know that when you squeeze a toothpaste tube, what comes out? Why? Because there's toothpaste in there. So when you are tipped over, what comes out of you? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And the only way is by me spending time is me getting to know him so deeply and so intimately. And the more he fills me, no matter what the circumstances, he fills me with his joy. Because in the presence of God, there is fullness. There is no lack in God's presence. This power enables us to live a life of godliness and to resist the weaknesses of the flesh. When we are submitted to the Holy Spirit, He leads us and He guides us. The more we know and spend time with Jesus, the more we experience the grace and the peace of God. Seriously, this morning I woke up, I had such a, I was like having a bit of an anxiety problem. I said to Michael, I said, oh, I think you've got the wrong person. Like, seriously, like, you're good at this, Mike. You do this all the time. Like, you're a man of power. He goes, mm-mm. <laughs> You see, because we look at our own weaknesses, we look at our feet of clay and we go, why me, God? But God says, yes, all the more reason. It's not because of this. It's not because of who you are. It's because of who I am through you. Amen. 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 Well Greater is he that is in me. In First Timothy, God says he's not given you a spirit of fear, but of love 
power and a sound mind. Come on. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Power to overcome the world. Power to overcome weaknesses. Whatever it is that's in your way that is causing you to be weak in areas, God has given you that power through the sweet, precious Holy Spirit to overcome. Power, love, love for one another. You see, when we are together, that is how the world will know who we are, is by our love one for another. Power and love and a sound mind. He gives you a sound mind, knowledge, that we can get to know him. Amen? Love, power, and a sound mind. We need to know him to know his grace and his peace. The way we come to know God is through reading the Bible, the living word of God. This is a living word of God. Did you, anybody before you were saved, did you try and read the Bible? Did it make huge impact on your life? Did you battle to read the Bible? I remember I tried so, tried, tried to read the Bible. Even like I wasn't saved, I was curious. And I could not read it. I read the words. But when I got saved and I asked the Holy Spirit to show me and help me, all of a sudden, these words started making sense to me. And even you can read the same passage of Scripture time and time and time and time again. And it's like the Holy Spirit, because the Word is the living Word of God, it just Oh, connects with your spirit. What you need at that specific time, there's a connection and there is life and there is fruit. Amen. So the more we read, the more we read. And honestly, I love reading what other people write about, like um, commentaries and uh, uh, people say, oh, Deborah, have you read this book? Oh, have you read that book? I I started to feel very, very illiterate at one stage because I thought, hmm, I do not have time. Like, is is it on audio? (laughs) Does it have pictures? <laughs> but the thing is, we get so busy reading what everybody else's revelation. Get into the Word, people. Yes, it's good to read and to supplement, but what is God saying to you through His Word? And when we come together and we discuss things and we, di- and, and we uh, iron sharpens iron, that is how we grow. Amen? So if I can encourage you, read the Bible. Let the Bible be your number one first choice. Just your first go-to. Um, all these other wonderful uh, authors and authoresses, they are fabulous teachers. But they've got their revelation through reading the Bible. Don't live on somebody else's uh, revelation. God has given you everything you need for a godly life. Amen? Fantastic. Come on. God has given me God has given me everything I need to live a godly life. Yeah, I don't have to go through via, via, via. Amen? So through Jesus, we come to an understanding of who God is. There was not a more perfect man who walked this earth. And when we see how Jesus walked on this earth, may we try to emulate. That is our whole Christian experience, is to become more and more like Jesus. The Bible tells me that he is changing us from glory to glory. I don't want to be the same Deborah I was six months ago. In fact, there were things I did yesterday that I don't want to be doing today. Okay? It's, it's, this, it's this progression. We are always moving forward. We're moving forward into glory. And it's not becoming a thing of works, but no, it's just the more I spend time in his presence, the more I spend time with Jesus, the more I just want to be like him. Amen? He is the one to emulate. He is the one that we adore. Um, there we go. I said not through in somebody else's revelation. Um, we need to have our own revelation Jesus asked Peter, because Peter was saying, oh, you know, in the marketplace, God, Jesus, they're saying, are you this, are you that? And in Matthew 16, Jesus says to Peter, Peter, who do you say I am? John, who do you say is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? Is he just my saviour? Is he my fixer-upperer? To some, he's a swear. But who is Jesus to you? Is he your Lord? And that is revealed by the Holy Spirit. And that's when Peter said, but you are the Lord. You are the Messiah. 
And Jesus says to him, that was revealed to you, not by flesh, but through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you that even now that you are working amongst us. And Lord, I just thank you that you reveal yourself to us in our hearts, that you are the Savior. You are the very breath in our lungs. That when we sing, Lord God, that even our breath, we do not take that for granted because that is a beautiful gift that comes from you and you alone. May we shout your praises. Who do you say I am? The more we read and we study God's word, the deeper, the deeper our relationship comes, becomes with him, right? And it's not just, oh, well, I've got to go and read my Bible now. No. Lord, you're the lover of my soul. I love spending time. You know, Holy Spirit, he comes and he woos us. He woos us. I love Song of Songs. Read that. Husbands, read that to your wives, please. Honestly, I think your marriages will flourish. (laughs) Those who aren't married, read it and look forward to something good. (laughs) Song of Songs. The Holy Spirit comes. He said his bed is verdant with love for us. He calls us. He, 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 he woos us. He, he longs. He longs to be intimate, to share those deep revelations, those deep promises that he has for each and every one of us. Okay? Holy Spirit, we love you. No matter what your problem is in life, no matter what your trial, no matter what your circumstance, there is a promise from God for every single situation. And I dare you to to test me on this one. For every problem, there's a promise. No matter what your problem is, there's a promise of God to match that problem, whether it's provision, protection, deliverance, and the list goes on. You see, when we run to him, he is the author and the perfecter of our lives. Every single thing that I need that I need, not necessarily want, God has in store for me. But that comes through spending time with him. He will give you wisdom. He will give you answers to great and unsearchable things. But it comes by spending time and by being intimate with him. Because in verse 4, it says that we are partakers of God's precious promises. They're not just flippant little promises like, oh, I promise you I'll do this. These are precious promises straight from heaven itself. God says, I will do it. I will see to it. I will see to it. But it comes by spending that time with him, getting to know him. He will unravel great mysteries. Eyes not seen, ears not heard. The great mysteries. I know sometimes I want to record straight stuff out of my mouth. I go, whoa, where did that come from? Because I know in Deborah, the wisdom or whatever, but the right word comes at the right time because Holy Spirit flows through us. Amen, Charlotte? Amen? You've seen it. It acts on the street at the right time, at the right place, being obedient to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. He works through us. Amen? We are vessels, wonderful vessels. A Christian walk is a continual progression. Oh, I got a bit forward ahead of myself, of becoming more like Jesus. And we should constantly be moving ahead, spiritually nurturing, maturing. If we stop growing spiritually, our lives become dry. I've heard this so many times. I'm feeling in such a dry place. I've been there myself. I'm feeling I'm in such a dry place. And when we stay in that dry place, that place of aridity, we actually become apathetic. Apathy. I just don't feel like it. I just, you know, I'm just not feeling it today. Let me tell you, go and spend some time. You don't even have to say anything. Just surround yourself in his presence. It could be a song. It could be a bird singing. Just watching little insects flitter around, and we can marvel. Uh, I went to the dollar store the other day, and we bought butterfly nets and magnifying glasses and tweezers, a whole shebang, and we went around the garden. It's fabulous. It's wonderful being with little people. They show you things that you kind of gloss over. 
as we move on in years. And there we were. I was exhausted by the end of the day. Hey, I was finished. I was like on my knees up there catching, chasing butterflies, looking at wasps and under magnifying glass, counting legs. And when you look at those little legs under a magnifying glass and you see the feelers and Oh my goodness, I, I actually forgot that I was speaking to like four-year-olds and I was going on about, oh, it's got a head and an abdomen and a thorax and it's got antenna and this is what to use the antenna for. And those are very important. Look at their wings. Can you count how many wings? And I got so wrapped up in the awesomeness of God's creation with a pesky insect, a, a wasp that everybody was petrified of. <laughs> but there was such, pardon? A dead one. Uh, it was a dead one, so I could look up at the clothes. <laughs> but like the beauty and the, 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 the absolute, it, oh, the, the, how do I say this thing? Like the, the intricacy, thank you, that went into a wasp. That we are trying to smote. <laughs> Let us never lose the wonder. Let us never lose the awe of God's creation. And then I started going on, but God created these creatures. And you know, the wasp is very important because it's eating all the other dead stuff. And I, I thought, oh, please don't kill the wasps. Please don't kill the wasps. Just be careful. Just don't let them sting you. <laughs> But you see, when we start to get wrapped up with God's beauty, when we start to see His beauty, we start to see things beautifully. Am I, am I, did I bring them? I love these glasses. I can't see out of them. But I wear them. <laughs> because there are days I am feeling blue. I oh, know these ones are. But I love to wear these glasses. I'm going like, <laughs> you know? But you know what? People smile at me when I'm walking in the mall or if I'm walking downtown. People smile at me. I either look silly or else they get it. Yeah, you know, she's got pink glasses on today because life is way rosier. What are the lenses you're looking through today? Have your lenses become tarnished because of circumstance, through hurt, through disappointment? Because you see, well, no matter what the lens is, that is what you're going to see through. Maybe your lenses have become slightly blurred. Maybe it's time to... And maybe just clean up a little bit. And that comes by spending time. That comes by spending time at the Father's feet. And allowing Him to just love on you. Just to love on you. Life is good. Remember, it's his breath in our lungs. <clears throat> oh my goodness, Michael. I encourage you to read this whole chapter to get the full context. Because he talks about spending time, right, praying and spending time in his presence. And in verse 5, in view of all of this, supplement your faith. In, in view of all of this. So he's talking about your faith, right? Supplement your faith. What is faith? Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of things that we do not see. That is our biblical view. Faith is that I can trust this thing. It's not going to collapse under me. Right? Every time I get into an airplane, it takes faith that this thing is going to take off and land it takes faith. It's being certain of what God, His Word is certain. So when I put my faith and when I put my trust in this, I will not be disappointed. Amen? Yeah. Faith is being certain. But Peter says, above, in view of all of this, to supplement your faith. With, read with me. I went and I colored all the little things. It makes it so much easier, you know, like... Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. A generous, generous provision. You know, we eat our food, but every morning I've got like all these giant bottles of the zinc and vitamin C and vitamin B12 complex and all these different, I take supplements. Why? So I can have a healthy glowing skin. That I can be healthy, okay? So 
not only do I eat my dinner, which is hopefully <laughs> comprised of more than just a bag of chips, I have my proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, but we also take complements to complement. So complement it with a general provision, uh, provision of moral excellence. What is moral excellence? It's that quality of doing what is right and avoiding what is wrong. Integrity, you know, in, in Proverbs 22, it says a good reputation is, is greater than the, the riches in this world. We went to a, a, a celebration of life yesterday. It was very sad. It was a 21-year-old whose life was taken unexpectedly, just like that. You know, and everyone, the people had an open mic, they had every man and woman that came up, all expressed that this was a man of integrity. And I thought, wow, a 21-year-old, he had made such an impact on his community. A good name, people. You know, we can be doing the good things, but what is your name, right? So it's, a quali it's doing what is right and, and avoiding what is wrong, integrity, goodness, and to be admirable. And tomorrow, excellence with knowledge. Knowledge is skills acquired by a person through experience and education. You know, like sometimes we go through really, really tough things. Well, that's, just see that as part of your education. You know what, when we see hardships as part of, of pruning us and as growing us, we'll actually view them differently. It says this here, see I'm following, I'm reading my Bible. Are you reading, following you? Second Peter 2, verse 4, and to knowledge was self-control. Oh, self-control. Oh my goodness, the ability to control oneself, in particular one's emotions and desires or behavior, especially, especially in difficult situations. Who knows, it's very easy to behave very well when the circumstances are right, but put me in some hot water. Hmm? Sometimes we see a very different Deborah. And so that is the part I'm working on in my life, is to be self-controlled. What? And that comes by spending time with Jesus. The more I spend time with Him. And to self-control, patient endurance. Patient endurance is the power to endure pain. It's to be able to endure or bearing pain and hardships. There's the ability or strength to continue or last, especially despite fatigue. You now you see these marathon runners, they're like, oh, they're all bandaged up. They are bleeding from every pore. But all they want to do is get to that end race. They want to get to that end ribbon. So you and I do not give up because of hardship. Do not lose faith. When we face these kind of trials, may we press on even more. That is when we spend more, t so spend, become more aware of spending time, becoming so aware of being with Him all the time. We all know that with iron, all, all passes through fire to burn out the dross. So if you're going through fire, if you're going through, if you feel the heat is up, it's just the dross that's being burnt out. And the way we do that weapon, our weapon is praise. The way we're going to get through that, we're going to raise a hallelujah, huh? Weapon is my praise. When I go through the toughest times, that's when I'm pray, praising the most. Do not be afraid of your own voice. Do not be afraid to sing out your hallelujahs. If we learn to stick with it when troubles, trials, and discouragement and difficulties come in our lives, there are wonderful results. When we endure, that brings the growth in our lives. And then to patient endurance, godliness. Well, godliness and holiness is different, right? Godliness is living a, a, a godly life. Holiness is being in right standing with God. So people sometimes get the two muddled up together. Living, see, you can live a godly life but not be holy. Does it make sense? You can be doing the right things but not in right standing with God. So we are talking about godliness and holiness. The holiness is what helps us live a godly life. And then with godly, godliness, with brotherly affection, brotherly affection that we love one another. That's that word, um, filio, is being considerate and living for the benefit of others. You know, even when it's not convenient, at our most inconvenient times, is that when we pull ourselves up and we extend love. And then 
brotherly love and affection with love, and that is that agape word, is that agape love of God that is just covers everything. It's, that's the love that we find in 1 Corinthians 13. It's the love that, read that as well when you go home. One Corinthians, it's, it's that love that is, because without it, I'm nothing but a clanging sounding gong. Everything is to be imbibed with love. John teaches us that we cannot love God um, without loving our brother. You can say, well, I love God, but this guy really stinks. Uh Uh-uh, that's his kid. Show him a little respect, you know. Let us love one another, because when we love one another, we actually show that we love God. Peter states that we should give diligence that we be found with peace, be found in peace, without spot and blameless in his sight. And that's in chapter th- uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 14. My challenge is, am I growing in these areas or am I simply maintaining? Am I growing or am I maintaining? The more you grow in these, the more productive you will be. There is never, ever a dull moment in being a Christian. And my encouragement to you is never lose the sense of eternity. May we always live with eternity in our hearts and our minds. You know, when we are ever cognizant that this isn't the end game, this is a preparation for what lies ahead. This isn't where it ends on earth. We live with eternity in our hearts and our minds. And so we've all got a little cup. Do you want to do this, Mikey, or can I carry on? And I just felt... I know sometimes this is very stretching when we say, let's just break into groups. Let's break into people, groups that you're close by with, where we can just love on each other, pray for each other. There are areas that I um, mentioned, you know, like with trials that we're going through, because I just felt there was, all of us face difficulties, because that's how we grow. We have happy times. And we have some not so happy times, but that is our growing time. Does everybody have a little cup? Yeah. So why don't we break into groups? Oh, there's some more here. Let's break into groups that are manageable. Let's have some holy chaos. Let's pray for one another. Jesus says that every time we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, do so in remembrance of me. And to do it in a worthy manner. What's the worthy manner? Lord, I come into your presence. And I ask that you would cleanse me and strengthen me. Amen? Forgive me. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, and you go, who is he? I'd love to know who he is. I want to be able to be a partaker of these precious promises. I would love to pray with you or speak to a friend. We are one family loved by God. Amen.